This is a, an old picture that I did not take from many years ago. It's a, a little complicated, but I'll quickly tell you that it is water that is spreading out on a surface and stopping at what we're calling hydrophobic lines. That's what started me on my whole new journey because that's a picture that they made and I said to them we could do better and we did. This is the same phenomena where the hydrophobic lines are preventing the water from blending together. That is in fact what the science is about. This was my job to help them communicate the science better. This is Alice Nasto's image of, a, of material that she made that she's studying in mechanical engineering. It's a fine image. This is the image that I made of the identical material. I hope you see the difference. If you don't see the difference, I'm in real trouble. But basically what I'm trying to do is engage you to look more clearly at the, at the research. Here's an image that I got off of, of the uh, online, and it's a picture of something called ferrofluid. This is the picture that I made many years ago of ferrofluid that I guess people still enjoy looking at. Ferrofluid is uh, oil suspension of small iron particles, and when you put magnets next to it, it, it responds to the magnetic field. It, for me, most of this is about getting you to see and to first look, to engage you, and to get you to understand that making beautiful images and honest images, which I could get to at the end, is a means of engagement, which I think is critical at this point of our lives. Science, in fact, is everywhere. And I suggest that when you make pictures of everything around you, it's a means of getting you to ask questions. What is it that exactly I'm seeing? Even walking down Com Ave, I remember distinctly seeing these trees. For whatever reason, they were wrapped around with cellophane and I was looking at these assemblies of drops around the crease. Everywhere is science, and why not start making pictures of it? Uh, this is just more fun. I, I, I got this device where I put my phone on the microscope, and these are just coffee bubbles that are kind of doing their thing. In the end, I always discuss with the researchers to maintain the scientific integrity in your images. For example, when I made this picture of a yeast colony out of Jerry Fink's lab, what I decided to do was to delete the Petri dish because I was blown away at what was going on in this yeast, yeast colony. The detail was astounding. And I wanted you to only pay attention to that. So I deleted the Petri dish. The question is, was I permitted to do so? I say yes, because the data was not manipulated. This is the data, not the Petri dish. Goethe wrote, that which we know, we have first seen. Well, let me tell you, when I make photographs, I see things that I've never seen before, obviously, but I also see that it is a means of discovery. I'm constantly asking questions whenever I take a picture of some sort of scientific phenomenon.